Okay, welcome back guys to another movie review. This movie, Pathfinder, from 2007, was a request by Robert A. Strickland, formerly Mega Devil of YouTube. And I did see this movie when it came out back in 2007. Um, actually, back when there were at local video stores around here before everything was Netflix and all the other places went out of business, but I did rent it, and I do remember I liked this movie, but I couldn't really remember everything about it because it has been a while. So I watched it again for this review, and I do really like this movie. I mean, I think they did a great job with the gear, um, designing the Vikings and the Native Americans, the weather. Um, I think it just it looks really cool, the environments and everything. So I definitely did like this movie. And it is pretty brutal, but uh, I'm just going to get right to it. Um, it starts off, and during the credits, it's showing a montage of the Vikings killing the Native Americans. And it's going through the cast, and I see that there is a person in this movie named Moon Bloodgood. <laughs> That's their actual name. And it turns out to be the Pathfinder's daughter later in the movie we find that out but her name is Moon Bloodgood so that's pretty awesome already uh, we see a Native American woman and she finds a Viking ship uh, there's dead bodies on board and she finds a little boy on the ship she takes him back to her village some of the Native Americans think that he can grow up and turn into a monster like what they call the dragon people the Vikings and some say he's just a child, so they agree that he's going to stay with them. We see in his dreams he remembers the Vikings killing the Native Americans. Uh, what happened when he was there. It shows his dad whipping him because he refuses to kill um, some little kids. And it's just, it's pretty brutal, actually. They have a lot of people getting their heads cut off here. And then we see 15 years later, he's grown up, he's one of them now, he's accepted by the Native Americans, and the Pathfinder shows up. He's with a trading group, he has his daughter, he tells the, I guess, the chief, who is the dad of the boy, the Viking boy, um, that his replacement to become the new Pathfinder was killed in an avalanche. He uses these little stones, and he says the prophecy is coming to fulfillment. Um, at night, they have a ritual for the Braves, and the Pathfinder says that the Viking kid uh, must face his past. Well, he's not a kid anymore, but he must face his past to earn the right to be there. So he gets upset, and he leaves, and his dad comes to talk to him. Um, he says he's upset he can't be a Brave, and we find out his name is Ghost. And while he is hunting... <laughs> Um, he goes off to go hunting and he takes a little village girl with him and she's gathering eggs or something and a Viking shows up and the Vikings just <clears throat> go crazy here they go to Ghost's village and they just start cutting heads off uh, <laughs> they kill everyone um, yeah everyone they start burning stuff throwing things over uh, it's pretty bad here um, Ghost is across the lake at the time, so all he sees is the village burning. When he finally gets to the village, he sees his mom, um, the lady that found him as a boy. She's dead. Um, <clears throat> he finds the Vikings because they're pounding on their shield, so he follows the sound and he sees them. And they have his dad, and they're, they give him like a Viking weapon to see if he can put up a fight. And, Obviously he can't because he's never used a sword made of iron or whatever. And they eventually kill him. So he sees his father getting killed here too. By the Viking leader. Um, and the Vikings for some reason speak Icelandic. But the Native Americans speak English. <laughs> That's, I mean I'm just, <clears throat> I'm just nitpicking here. But I did find that kind of funny. So they see Ghost, he just walks right up to him when he sees his dad get killed. And they give him a sword to entertain themselves and see if he can actually use it because he does. They do notice that he looks strange. Because he looks like them. And 
Ghost kills one of the Vikings. He cuts the other's eye out. He grabs a shield and he starts running away. Um, some Vikings are chasing him. He kills one of them and steals their horse. He makes it up to the snowy mountain, which I guess is the Vikings camp. And he gets shot in the back with an arrow and he falls on the shield and it just starts sliding down the mountain on it. Um, the Vikings have actual sleds here, which is why I assumed it was their camp. And they start chasing him down the mountain on the sleds. He finally escapes, but he is hurt. Um, he meets up with the Pathfinder, Pathfinder's daughter, and the Braves, and he passes out um, from the arrow wound. And then a damn grizzly bear shows up. <laughs> um, it knocks away some of the Braves. This thing is huge, it's massive, and the Pathfinder actually kills it by himself. Um, he uses the bear's own strength against it to kill it. Um, they take Ghost back to the Pathfinder's village, they fix him up, he tells the villagers they need to leave. One of the Braves wants to fight the Vikings, but Ghost uses the Viking sword, and one of the Braves, the guy who wants to fight the Vikings, he's got like this wood stick, and Ghost takes the iron sword and just cuts it like that. And he's like, you can't hurt these guys. Arrows can't pierce their armor. Um, you, there's just, you have no chance. If you want to live, you guys need to pack up and leave. So Ghost himself wants to fight the Vikings. He was found with an iron sword, so he is trained in it. It's what he grew up training with, so he does know how to fight like a Viking. And he wants to go off and fight Pathfinder's daughter. Uh, they got some chemistry going on here. She doesn't want him to go, but the Pathfinder says it's his choice. So Ghost is going towards the Vikings, and one of the Braves, who happens to be mute, is following him. Uh, Ghost tries to get him to go back to the village, but he doesn't listen. He wants to follow Ghost, so he follows him. Um, they set up a camp. Uh, he has a vision about the Pathfinder, but it's, he's just dreaming. The Pathfinder's daughter shows up. She followed Ghost too. They have sex. Um, he leaves the Vikings. Uh, hold on. Okay, so he hears the Vikings coming. And he's got all these traps set up. He camouflages his body. He hides. He starts picking them off. Um, he's got all types of stuff set up here, and he's just killing these Vikings off. Um, Pathfinder's daughter, uh, the Mute Brave, they all help him um, kill these Vikings. Finally, the Vikings are ready to attack him. He's kind of surrounded. Um, he's standing on this hill, and all the Vikings show up, and he's holding up a head of a Viking he cut off. And he throws it down, and we see that he has all these traps of, like, pits of spikes set up, and he's trying to lure the Vikings to him. But before the Vikings fall for this, all these Braves come to help him. And he's like, they're all coming from behind, and he's turning, and he's seeing all these Braves, and he's like, no! And of course, they run down, and they fall into the spikes. Um, they just get completely slaughtered here by the spikes. The Vikings jump down and kill whatever ones the spikes didn't kill. It was just pretty bad. Um, that is one thing about this movie, and I know I'm kind of... I mean, they didn't necessarily do it on purpose, but it does seem like they make the Native Americans look pretty bad in this movie. Uh, they're falling for their own traps... And they just come across as not as good. It's like they have to have the only guy who can save the Native Americans happens to be a white Viking. It just seems kind of weird to me. Um, not that they necessarily did it on purpose, but it's just one of those things, you know. So all the Vikings fall into the spikes and they're getting slaughtered. Um, he's able to save one of the Braves, though. And they ride off on a horse... Um, the Braves hurt, and he decides that he's going to stay behind and fight so that Ghost can go save the Pathfinder's daughter. Um, this guy, the Brave who decides to stay behind, who risks his life to allow Ghost to get ahead and escape, has a bow and kills maybe one of them. Maybe, he, I think he hits two, but kills one uh, before he's he dies. 
So <laughs> it was really just not even worth the effort. But he was hurt, so. Uh, the Vikings are after the daughter of the Pathfinder, and the Mute Brave actually tries to save her, and he gets killed too. So the Vikings are trying to lure out Ghost and the Pathfinder's daughter, and they take a Brave who's still alive to hang him upside down over a fire. Um, and they're trying to lure him out. The daughter tells Ghost not to go. The Pathfinder shows up and shoots the Brave with an arrow to end his misery. So that was pretty intense. Um, the three of them start fighting the Vikings, but they get captured. And the Viking leader wants to know where the next village is. But I'm thinking it's not like they can understand him. So he decides he's going to take the Pathfinder and rip him apart with horses. And they do. They hang him up and they have horses go in opposite directions and just rip the guy apart. The leader says he knows a ship was here with a boy years ago. And he, uh, he knew Ghost's father, his real father. And they decide that if he's not going to tell him where the next village is, he's about to cut off the daughter's hand. But then Ghost says he'll take him to the next village if they don't hurt the girl. And he says all this to him in their language. Which, <laughs> after all these years and all the mental trauma I imagine he suffered, it's amazing he speaks it as well as he does here. But once again, I'm just being picky. And it's also strange that while he's watching the Pathfinder being ripped to shreds in what has to be one of the most painful deaths of all time, to just be have your body pulled apart by horses, um, the minute they go to cut off the Pathfinder's daughter's hand, all right, man, let's play ball. Uh, it just seemed a little strange to me the way that worked out. So he's trying to lead them to... He's not really wanting to lead them to the people, but he's got a plan. So he picks up some items from the villages on the way, um, and he uses those to make them think they're going in the right direction so he can get them to go where he wants. He takes them to a lake of ice he knows is cracking because of spring, and he leads them across. A lot of them fall in. The lake breaks, and they're all falling in the water, freezing to death. Um, while he's under the lake, he actually has a vision of the Pathfinder, and Ghost tells the Pathfinder, um, underwater in this vision state, he says, I'm dying. And the Pathfinder says, don't complain to me about it. <laughs> so that was a good line there. Um, the Vikings pull Ghost out of the lake, and they all continue up the mountain. So they end up going across this steep cliffside, and at this part, <laughs> I'm starting to wonder when the Vikings are going to question this. Did they really think an entire village went this way? I mean, seriously. All they had to go on was a doll. Ghost planted a village doll, and they found it, and they're just following whatever he says. They find this lake, they find the cliffside, and they do not even question this up until the very end. And at that point, um, the Vikings tie themselves together so they can get across this cliffside. And Ghost has the Pathfinder's daughter hit him, so it looks like they're fighting. And he hits a Viking in the head with a rock, and since they're all tied together, they start to topple off the cliff. Um, everyone except the boss and his right-hand guy. Um, they're tied together too, but the boss kills the right-hand guy, so his weight doesn't bring him down. And they start to fight Ghost and the daughter. They start to fight the boss Viking, and Ghost starts screaming... I know who I am, and it causes an avalanche, which he did on purpose. Um, but the Viking actually survives, and they end up having a sword fight. Ghost stabs him, and then he falls off the cliff. Uh, Ghost and the Pathfinder's daughter make it to the village, and in the very beginning of the movie, when the woman finds the little boy on the Viking ship, there's like this white horse running around. And here at the end of the movie, they make it to the village, and all the villagers see this white horse come back. And the prophecy has gone full circle now. Um, that, I guess, is supposed to mean Ghost was the white horse or something to save him. But the daughter becomes the new Pathfinder, and we see in the future they have a baby together. So, that was it. Like I said, it was a cool movie. 
I like the environments. I like the um, the outfits and armor and all that stuff. And it was pretty brutal as far as the fighting goes and just the Vikings slaughtering all these people, cutting arms and legs and stuff off. So it was a pretty good movie, I thought. It was about an hour and 40 minutes. But I looked this up on Wikipedia, and apparently this movie didn't even make its budget back at the box office. It was like $5 million under what it even cost to make. So the movie didn't do too well, which is a shame, because I thought they did a pretty good job with this one. But um, like I said, I did like the movie, and I think it is worth checking out if you haven't seen this one. I think you probably enjoy it. Um, so yeah, give this one a chance if you can find it or order it off Netflix. So that's my review of The Pathfinder. Hope you guys like this review. And I'm going to be doing a lot of movie reviews this weekend, so check those out too. And if you have seen this movie, leave your thoughts on it in the comments. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.